Hey, welcome back to 65 Drums. My name's Justin. Today I want to cover Porter and Davies line of drum thrones. These are actually my favorite drum thrones I've ever used in my entire life. I'll probably never buy one for reasons I'll get into later, but uh, these are fantastic. It vibrates your entire body, your spine. It's a crazy experience that's kind of hard to explain in words, and it's one of those things where you kind of have to just go find a music store or a drum store that happens to have one. It comes in a couple of pieces. So you have the throne top, and then you have this box on the ground that they call the engine. They're interconnected with a speaker cable that locks in place, so it's never going to become unplugged. What you do is you plug your kick drum mic into the system, and then there's a pass through so it can go to front of house so there's no interruption of the signal. But then it feeds that signal, the kick drum, into the drum throne itself. Or if you play electronic drums, you can just feed like a mono out of the back of the module. Or if you have a direct out, you can feed just the kick and the snare. Or if you want, you can feed in other instruments as well. Let's say that you really want to feel locked in with the bass player, like on a literal level, not just like an auditory level. You can have them just feed you an extra line and that can go into this unit as well. I was watching a video where they were interviewing Porter and Davies, like the actual guys named Porter and Davies, about some of the specifications and some of the inner workings of these things. And he was mentioning that it goes from 5 hertz all the way up to 17K. So you're literally feeling uh, different frequencies that you physically cannot hear with your ears. Now, on the one hand, this is partly a party trick of sorts. But on the other hand, it still makes you feel like the god of drumming. You know, music is experiential. We're doing this based on emotion as well as logic. And so anything that can trick your monkey brain into having a better time while playing drums, I think that's something that we want. Another big advantage is if you're using in-ears while playing live. This is something that everybody's noticed when they switch away from speakers like floor wedges over to in-ears. You get that clarity of in-ears. You get that separation just overall. In-ears are a gift from God if you're playing live, way better than having floor wedges. But the problem is you don't get that rumble, you don't get that bass sometimes that you notice if you're using a subwoofer. There's one guy explaining that he could literally turn down the volume of his kick drum in the mix, which made way for other instruments in his band because he could already feel the kick drum. He didn't need to have it super loud in his in-ears. And then when it comes to electronic drums, uh, this is also very useful because it gives you back the sensation that you're losing when you're playing acoustic drums. You're not moving the air. You're not like shaking the floor or anything when you're playing electronic drums because they're made to be silent. This gives you back some of that tactile feedback. This reminds me of a review I was watching of Roland's latest new Baby Grand electronic piano. They actually have the keys vibrating as you play, if you play really hard, to sort of mimic the acoustic-like reaction. It also, another thing that comes to mind is, have you ever played video games and your controller gets low on battery, so it turns off the vibration function of the controller? And all of a sudden, the game that you're playing feels half dead. It, like the experience, you weren't noticing it until it was gone, but now the experience feels a little bit lifeless. That's also something that people experience when they get used to one of these drum thrones and then stop using it. But of course, none of this matters if the drum throne isn't comfortable. And thankfully, it is comfy. I really like the way these feel. There's three different saddle variants. You've got your circular, you got your saddle, and then you have your ultra wide variant. So you can buy this in black velvet, black vinyl, British racing green velvet. The name seems a little excessive, but we'll go with it. Uh, there's purple velvet, and then there's battleship gray velvet. All right, so next up, let's cover what's actually powering the drum throne, because this is a two-piece system. This gets a little bit confusing because uh, there's four of these things and there's a special version of the drum throne that doesn't need it, but here's a dumbs down explanation. The BCX is the entry level. It's the smallest of the bunch and it only comes with a round seat. The next one up is the BC Gigster. It has roughly 20% more power and also it comes in all the seat configurations and all the color options. The next one up is the BC2. This comes with a handy flight case, separate XLR and aux quarter inch inputs, a 48 phantom power button, and it's voltage switchable depending on which country that you're in. The BC2 RM is the same as the BC2, but it's in a different form factor. If you're trying to avoid having yet another box just sitting on the floor of the stage, this is a way to get the exact same thing, but on the rack with the rest of your equipment. And it turns out some bands don't wanna buy an engine at all. They'd rather just use a high powered amp they already have. So the company sells something called the TT6 equipped throne. I'll throw up a text blurb on screen if you wanna know the details. Now the one that I tested was the Gigster. So let's cover like the controls and the inputs on this one to give you an overall feel for the rest. You got your combo port here for either your microphone or the feed from your electronic drums. There's an output that splits the signal from the input. So let's say that you're playing live and you have your kick drum mic going through this. Well, it splits it so it can still go to front of house. 
And then you've got that cable that goes over to the drum throne itself, which plugs in right here. I really, really should know the name of this cable because I used to be a stagehand and I've plugged tons of speakers in with this. As far as controls, you get the master volume dial, and then you got that input trim to make sure that you're not peaking levels. And then there's the contour dial. This acts as a one band EQ or a high pass filter. It lets you decide how boomy the drum throne gets, which is kind of weird to say out loud, but that's literally what's happening. Now, of course, with a device like this, there's always a chance of you turning it up too loud and then frying your equipment, which you don't want to do when you spend this much money. But with the BC2, it looks like they use a vacuum tube to divert some of the power into, and that keeps it safe. Again, this only happens if you're peaking the signals too high. Okay, so obviously I really like these drum thrones. I think they're the best in the business, but nothing's perfect. There's gonna be downsides to everything. So what's the trade-off of going with a Porter and Davies? Well, there it is. They start at $950 and go all the way up to $1,700. I can't give you specific prices for different makes and models because it just depends on the website. There's no standardization as far as I can tell. So make sure you really do your shopping because you can save hundreds of dollars by shopping in one place versus another place. But no matter how you slice it, no matter where you buy it, I've never heard of a drone throne that starts at like $1,100 for the mid-range one. Now the question is, why is it so expensive? To be honest, I don't really know, but I do have some theories. The first reason why it's more expensive is that uh, these are being hand assembled in the UK and then they're individually tested and sometimes tuned by one of the two founders of the company. That's gotta add cost. The second reason why they're expensive is that there's a lot more going on inside of one of these thrones versus like, uh, whatever, a rock and sock like what I use on my drum sets or a pork pie drum throne. You start with that as a base and then you also have to put the device on the inside that vibrates your body and produces the sound. And then you also have an engine on the side, which by itself is probably very expensive. They're not using cheap components there. That is very, very heavy duty. And it's probably also important to mention that this company is not trying to be the next Alesis or the next Behringer. They're not trying to make mass market products. If they wanted to do that, they could probably get the price down to something a lot more affordable. But this is basically a small boutique drum firm that's trying to make luxury drum thrones for gigging drummers that do this professionally and for hardcore enthusiasts. That's the niche they're going for and by golly, they're sticking to it. And you know what? That's fine. That's their prerogative as a company to make a product that they're proud of at a price range they feel like charging for. But when you decide to do that sort of thing as a company, there are knock-on effects. And the knock-on effect is that they've priced out the vast majority of drummers. I don't care how amazing a drum throne is, the vast majority of us can't really afford to spend $1,000 on a drum throne. Even a lot of professional drummers with the state of like, you know, the live music industry and Spotify cutting into profits and how expensive tour buses are getting, I feel like a lot of professional drummers are trying to cut costs wherever they can. And will they want to spend another thousand dollars on an accessory? Because that's really what this amounts to. At a certain point, every drummer has to decide for themselves, do you want to buy the best drum throne on earth? Or do you want to buy a whole second drum set to practice with at your house? Do you want to buy one incredible drum throne? Or do you want to upgrade all of your cymbals? The second downside is that you're not actually getting the whole drum throne. This company has decided in their infinite wisdom that we don't need legs. I feel like if I emailed them, they'd give me a list of reasons why they couldn't possibly include a set of drum legs. It's what holds you up as you're sitting down. You can't just remove a feature like that and then expect nobody to be confused as to why you did it. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of when BMW started selling cars with heated seats built into the cars and then refusing to turn it on until you paid them $19.95 per month. The next downside is that if you're a fan of back seats, there's no stock version of this drum throne that comes with a back seat. Maybe there's a reason for this, I don't know. And I'm sure that if you emailed the company and did a custom order, they could probably put a custom back seat on for you. But it would be nice if they're gonna, you know, have these really expensive drum thrones to at least have a variant where you spend an extra hundred dollars and get a back seat. And the final downside, and this is something that not everybody talks about, these do generate noise. If you look at product pages, they don't say that it generates noise, but in real life, if I pump a song through this drum throne and then walk to a different room and turn it up loud enough, I can hear the drum throne from a different room. Now, of course, if you think about this for five seconds, obviously it was gonna make a sound of some kind. If I'm sitting on a device that's this powerful and shakes my spine, it's gonna make a noise of some kind. It's like the laws of physics. It, even bone conduction like headphones that sort of rest on your head like that, they make noise that you can hear if you're walking by somebody that has them. 
not a problem on acoustic drums because you're just pumping a kick drum mic through there. It's going to blend in with the sound of the, of the whole acoustic drum set. But with electronic drums, if you crank it and you're trying to play quiet on an electronic drum set, it does add to the overall noise of your setup. Just something to be aware of. I don't think it's a deal breaker for everybody, but you need to be aware of it. Okay, so before we move ahead to the next product they make, which is really cool, but you've probably never heard of, let's wrap up their drum thrones. My overall take on, you know, Porter Davies drum thrones is that they make the best drum thrones in the world, but most people probably won't buy them. Really good for people that make a lot of money touring live and can justify the expense. But for the average drummer, this is more of a aspirational product. It's a luxury thing that would be nice to have. It's fantastic though, and I highly recommend trying one out because it is an experience. I can try to describe it scientifically all I want, but that would be like, you know, me trying to scientifically describe a roller coaster ride. Yeah, I can say it goes up and down and twists around, but until you're on a roller coaster, you don't really get what all the hype's about. All right, so next up is the Porter & Davies KT platform. This is essentially a device like their drum thrones, but for bass players, guitar players, keyboard players, or DJs. But it allows you not to be sitting down. You can actually be standing, you can walk off it if you're like a guitar player and like to run the stage, but it gives you that experience of feeling the music in your bones while also not having the noise that comes along with it. And according to the way they're talking about it, it sounds like you're going to feel the vibration at first and you're not really going to hear anything, but then eventually your inner ear will start to produce the sounds for you after using it for a tiny bit. So it seems like a very, very interesting product. I think especially bass players would probably love a device like this. And the deeper that you go into this sort of rabbit hole, turns out other competitors are doing something similar as well. So if you want something like this, you can sort of cross compare against different brands and see what's best for you. All right, so that is your roundup of Porter and Davies. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Really, really appreciate it. See you in the next one.